So as we move on with our structural integrity series, we've covered our foundation details about overturning. Go check out the last video to be able to get more information on that specific topic. But as we move forward, we're gonna talk about racking. And we're at a perfect point in this project to be able to discuss it. As you can see, we have our bracing in here to be able to ensure that we get these walls level and plumb and straight during the course of construction. So these are temporary bracing that's gonna allow us to be able to shore up the house and be able to avoid racking. Let's get to it. So what exactly is the definition of racking? Well, racking is the deformation of a rectangular shape into a parallelogram shape due to lateral forces and loads. So today we're gonna to talk about why it's so important to ensure that things are plumb, square, and level, not just from a visual fit and finish perspective, but from a structural integrity perspective. So if you've ever been around a job site at Framing, you're gonna see a lot of temporary bracing that's put in place. And the main reason for that is we're trying to shore up the house, but until all of the structural components, such as in this case, the floor joists, our glue lamp beams, our three ply girder trusses, as well as other components are coming together, we need to be able to ensure that these walls stay plumb and straight until all of the structural components within the house are complete. And while sometimes these items are relatively inconvenient during the flow of construction or when doing site walks, the reality is, is that they're able to hold the components in place, make them as stable as possible to be able to ensure that racking doesn't occur during the course of construction. In this case, we need to brace up the exterior walls on the first level to be able to ensure that they don't move while we're setting our trusses because ultimately we aren't gonna be able to go back and fix any racking that might occur as we continue to move on to the second level and then eventually to our ceiling slash roof that will be associated with the top layer of our framing package. So we're currently sitting in the garage and ultimately any of you guys that have had kids my kids love magnet tiles, and magnet tiles obviously allow you to be able to build some pretty cool structures. However, the structural integrity of those aren't that great. Ultimately, you have maybe two walls and then you start to build a roof, and it doesn't take much on the lateral force to be able to get that tower to knock over. Well, the same is the case with a building. In this case, we wanna make sure that we're plumb and straight so that we can be able to associate the loads above us to ensure that they come straight down through that wall section to our stem wall and eventually to our footings. But one of the things that really help to alleviate issues with racking is gonna be shear walls that are called out on our engineering set. And a shear wall is gonna help with various lateral loads. So in this case, we have two walls with two by six framing members that run this exterior wall. So in this case, instead of just having a two by six wall, we're gonna add shear value to it by adding these four by 10 foot sheets of OSB that are currently a minimum of three eighths. And on our builds, this is increased to a seven sixteenths OSB. Overall, this helps to create structural integrity so that if there was a large wind load or you had a monsoon coming in that maybe hit from the direction of the flat face of the house, we wouldn't have any racking or at least a lot less racking or movement that would occur within this wall. Now that goes for both sides. In this case, we have shear value on the west side and the east side of the garage that not only help with our west and east lateral loads, but it also helps with our north and south lateral loads dependent on the direction of that live load that might be hitting the house in the future. So when we're talking about the structural requirements for shear value, one of the most critical components that's gonna be calculated is the base shear value. And that's gonna be the maximum amount of load that could be associated at the house at any given point vertically on the structure that allows for no or little movement that's occurred within the base of the property, allowing for structural integrity, racking, and what we previously referred to overturning within the property. So to illustrate this for our viewers out there, we have our mud seal that's located down here, often referred to as a base plate. And really when we're talking about the lateral loads that might be inherent within this area, let's say with a large storm that comes through, we want no to little, very little movement that's associated at the base. And this is why having a structural engineer ensuring that the amount of shear that's located throughout the house meets these requirements, regardless of the scenarios that will take place throughout the lifespan of this home. So now that we've discussed the importance of why it's important to be able to meet the minimum requirements for our base shear calculation, let's talk about some of the various areas throughout the home that have shear wall that are associated in rebuild the block homes and many other luxury builders throughout the country. So the first we talked is about exterior shear and ultimately we do a sheathing that encompasses every exterior wall and 
Oftentimes, if you look at track home building, since they're building at, let's say, a lower dollar amount, they might only follow a shear schedule that only requires a few shear panels as they've been able to minimize the overall structural components of the house, maximizing their profits and minimizing the overall cost to build. At, our, at Rebuild the Block, we find that sheathing or shearing all of the exterior walls is a major benefit, not only for the integrity of the home, but also to be able to allow us to be able to easily meet the energy requirements that are necessary within our builds here in Arizona. In addition to that, if you look in the entryway of this modern row home that we're currently building, we have a large span opening. And this opening is about 25 feet deep by about eight feet across. Essentially, this is gonna add a lot of clear span openings to be able to deal with. And because of that, we have a sheer wall detail that's called out on the interior of our home that runs the whole length of this interior load bearing wall that allows us to be able to make sure that we don't have any racking. That obviously creates more rigidity of the home, but also reduces any opportunity for it to rack in the future due to some of the live loads that'll be associated within this property. One of the details that I'll mention that often gets overlooked is that it's not just the cost of the overall windows and glass that are associated in the house, it also has to do with, with the structural components that allow you to be able to meet the structural integrity of the home. And in this case, we have a two-ply girder truss that's associated in this entryway so that instead of having a full expansive piece of glass that runs top to bottom, we have some structural integrity that's able to hold the first and second story together and still give us an expansive use of glass with our front door and side light and our clear story lights that will allow light to reside throughout this home. But it's very important to look at some of these overall components when you're designing a property to be able to understand that there might be more costs associated to be able to get the structural integrity that you're looking for to get the overall design aesthetic and curb appeal of a modern design. So the last thing I'd like to cover on shear value is the overall importance of having this OSB on load bearing wall. Ultimately, as that load compresses, this allows for all your framing members and your two by fours to be connected together as one piece and ultimately allows you to be able to have the associated dead load and live load that are required for this home. So once again, I'll reference our plan set, but our structural engineer created a shear wall detail set that allows us to be able to understand exactly what the shear wall requirements are throughout the home. And as you'll notice that although the shear wall is only called out on various locations throughout the home, the whole exterior of this house will be sheeted appropriately so that it'll create even more structural integrity for the home for years to come. Ultimately, we appreciate you following us about the structural integrity and components thereof as it relates to our foundation and our framing. As always, go and check the previous video out if you wanna learn more about overturning and the associated details with our footing and stem walls. Click and subscribe below. Should you have any feedback or questions or comments about this video or videos that you'd like for us to post in the future. And as always, have a great day.